Hey everybody, so uh, yeah, this is Tim, back again with another video. And uh, big day, we're building a new workstation, or I have actually already built the new workstation. Because I'm actually recording this intro for the second time. I had initially recorded the entire uh, intro part before we did the actual build, because I figured it might be interesting. But when I edited that uh, part, it turned out quite long, because you know, I, I ramble a lot. So I figured I'd re-record the intro part, make it a little bit shorter probably still going to be way too long because i just talk too much but so it's going to be cut up in a whole bunch of different videos so first is just me uh talking about what i'm going to build so it's just going to be the intro and the intro is going to be intercut with like a lot of unboxing type stuff because i didn't make sense to do a separate unboxing in my opinion so i'm going to intercut it with all of the unbox unboxing parts then we're going to have a couple of videos of me actually building it. So I've, I've uh, actually recorded the entire building process of this uh, super awesome machine and it's going to be cut up into multiple parts because we're actually doing custom loop water cooling and I figured that might be interesting to have as a separate uh, video because that was something that was the first time for me doing custom loop water cooling on a workstation uh, and I learned quite a lot doing that so I'm going to make that a separate video. Uh, there's going to be a separate video regarding the sort of hard like the uh the, the software side of it uh so it's going to be a whole range of new videos so if you're interested in the hardware and stuff this should hopefully be, make for an interesting video series so uh yeah let me just explain about the new workstation so this is something i've been wanting to build for quite a long time like my previous workstation was from 2016 at that time uh like the, an eight core cpu was like pretty high-end for like the prosumer type stuff so i i spent way too much money on an eight core cpu it was just before ryzen started coming up so anyway so i was kind of in do like kind of in need for a new upgrade so i went with a uh well uh, <laughs> like a completely no compromises build this is the first time they've done a build where it's like absolutely no compromises i just got all the parts that i thought would be best for my build uh the only thing that's not in this video yet is the 3090 that i ordered because nvidia you completely botched the launch i ordered mine just after launch, I haven't received it yet. So that's gonna be a separate video later on where I'm gonna put, be putting in my 3090, I'm gonna water cool it, it's gonna be in this thing. That's gonna be a separate video because I've been waiting for weeks already and I haven't received my 3090 yet. So hopefully it'll be here sometime soon. All right, so quick update. So initially i recorded this video that i was excited because i got an email about uh, from uh, i got an email from amazon saying i was going to get my 3090 next week so i ordered all my water cooling components for it and i was like getting super excited to well, finally put it in the uh, in the build and then also maybe even put it in the video before i uploaded it but two days after that i got an email saying oh no we cancelled your order there's no 3090 coming we're not taking any more orders uh, so I've been waiting a month for no reason. So uh, I have no idea when I'm going to get this thing. So honestly, how, how is Nvidia even... How? Why did they release this card <laughs> if there's no supply? It's crazy. Anyway, let's continue with the video. Anyway, let me just get into uh, yeah the components that I, uh, that I that I purchased. So first off, CPU. I went with a uh, AMD Threadripper 3970X which is the uh, 32 core 64 thread part. Some of you might ask Tim, why didn't you go with the 64 core? Because you said this is a no, no compromises build. It's mainly because the 32 core part has slightly higher clock speeds. And uh, I still like a lot of stuff is just not simply not multi-threaded. So a lot of just general Houdini uh, sub level stuff, not everything is perfectly multi-threaded. And I figured it would be just be faster for my general work that I do. Uh, to just work on the 32 core part the 64 core beast, uh, uh, part is probably going to be an absolute beast with cpu rendering but i generally just do a lot of gpu rendering in redshift so that's why i went with the 32 core part so i'm going to be pairing that up with 256 gigabytes of memory so this is a kit that's been verified for the model bar that i have uh, the reason why i went with 256 is like you might ask like tim what the hell are you planning to do with 256 gigabytes of memory well, first, if you have a super heavy sim, it's obviously going to be super useful. But the main cool thing with this is, for example, if you have 256 gigabytes of memory, you can, for example, just uh, run sims in the background. Like, for example, I can configure Deadline, uh, which is the ran uh, random management software, to, for example, only use half of my cores and just run sims in the background. 
and then I can still keep working while I have enough memory in the background to also run background sims. So that's going to be quite nice. Also with PDG inside of Houdini, that's going to be quite nice. And just overall to have massive amount of RAM is pretty crazy. So it's a 3600 megahertz RAM kit, which is important if you're building a, uh, a Threadripper or just a Ryzen build in general, because how these Ryzen chips work is they're essentially uh, multiple chiplets on a single CPU. So, and those have individual have, have cores, and then those cores are interconnected through Infinity Fabric. Um, and the speed of Infinity Fabric is dependent on the speed of your RAM. So you want as fast RAM as you, uh, as you can possibly get. Like the fastest speed you can get for 256 gigabytes is 3600 which is an overclocked kit because by default, uh, Treasure only support 2666 when you're going uh, with eight dims, but it's been running pretty stable with uh, 256 eight dims. So I'm pretty happy with that. If you're gonna get RAM um, and you wanna get 256, get it as one kit. Don't get 128 and upgrade later. The problem with buying RAM and then adding RAM later is that if the, the kit is not tested together, it might lead to a lot of instability. So if you're going to get this much RAM, you probably want to get it as one single kit. And make sure to check both the qualified vendor list uh, on your motherboard and, uh, or on your RAM and see if the motherboard and the RAM are compatible. So for example, this RAM that I have uh, is verified with my motherboard. So there's a qualified, qualified vendor list uh, indicating that it's qualified. Uh, compatible with my motherboard uh, it's not on the qualified vendor list of my motherboard because the ram came out after uh, the motherboard came out but that's something to keep in mind if you're building a workstation make sure especially with like amd stuff because it's a little bit more picky with ram so yeah with the motherboard i have the uh aurus extreme by gigabyte so that's probably the most high-end motherboard that you can get for um for threadripper which is absolutely insane board so one reason i got this board is like I mentioned, this has uh, support for 256 gigabytes, which is verified for my memory. So that's important. It has dual 10 gigabit ethernet, which might be quite nice if ever I want to use uh, link aggregation. Like you guys know, I have 10 gigabit ethernet running in the office. So that's, that's going to be quite nice. It has four NVMe slots, so you plenty of room for NVMe. Plus it comes with an extra add-in card that also, uh, that, that, that also has room for, for extra cards in case you want to do that. Plus this is one of the few motherboards that has... Uh, enough room for four GPUs in terms of PCIe spacing. It's an XL80X motherboard, which means it's a little bit higher, so it's not gonna fit in every case. The problem with ATX standard is that it's not an actual standard, so there's kind of random names, and XL80X is one that only Gigabyte basically uses, and I think one other uh, manufacturer. So make sure that your case works with this. So uh, in terms of the case, I have a Li and Li O11 Dynamic XL, which is a super nice case for water cooling. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna do custom water cooling. Uh, and this also has enough space for this motherboard. The regular O11 Dynamic doesn't, I think, but the XL definitely has enough space. Uh, it's been running fine. And I emailed Lee and Lee beforehand to also check if it was actually gonna work. Then I have uh, two two terabyte NVMe drives, uh, which are gen four NVMe drives. I rated those two together. Uh, which will give me a about 10 gigabytes a second transfer, which is going to be interesting because you would expect that to be extremely fast with caches inside of Houdini. And it is definitely fast, but there are some caveats to that, which I'm going to discuss in the later video about software because it's not going to be as fast as you actually expect. So I'm going to get into that in a later video. Uh, but it's still, it's pretty crazy with these transfers and it's been, def been a definite, definite upgrade for me. I am going to, like I mentioned, I rate, rate zero these two together. And that's only something I would advise you to do if you have proper backups. Because if one of the, those drives fill, you lose all your data on your drives. So it's, uh, but what I'm doing is actually I'm using SyncFing, which is a piece of software that allows you to sync, uh, sync drives over the network. So I'm actually live syncing my internal NVMe to my uh, NAS, which my FreeNAS server that I built, which I have a separate video on. You can find a link to that in the description, which is my uh, NAS that has 30 terabytes of storage and it's live mirroring to it. So other machines can grab data from the NAS. And uh, so if I like, like for example, if I write something to my NVMe pool, it will instantly mirror to my NAS over the network or over the internet, because I've actually have had the machine at home here and it also works over the internet. 
And then for example, if I'm gonna use my other machines to render or whatever, then they can grab the same assets from the NAS and then it also won't bottleneck my internal NVMe drives. So that's, that's quite nice. So here's a little demo of that. Here's my remote computer running on any desk. So this is the NAS mounted in Windows. Here's my local computer on my workstation. I'm connected through the internet. And if I paste a picture of a cheese in here, so there's a cheese. I'm gonna wait a little bit because it takes a little bit to sort of recognize that there's a new thing there. But you can see it starts syncing up to date and my cheese appears. Uh, so, but again, more on that part will be in the software side of the videos. So aside from that, I have a 1500 watt power supply. So it's a Be Quiet power supply, the Dark Work Pro. Uh, I've had uh, be quiet power supplies before and they're quite nice power supplies. I initially wanted to get the 1600 watt by Corsair But it wasn't available. So I just got this one one thing there is like if you're gonna put a lot of GPUs in your rig Then 1500 or 1600 watt might not be enough Which is why the case that I have the O11 dynamic is super nice because there's actually room for up to three power supplies Which is pretty crazy. So if it's not enough to have one power supply or two power supplies, like you can add extra power supply. So that's why it's a super nice case for both water cooling and just in general, a, like a GPU oriented workstation. Uh, right now, what I did is I just put my old GPUs in this machine up until I received my 3090. Um, so right now there's two 1080 Ti's and one 1080 in there, which I've been working with now. Uh, those came from my old build. I am doing custom loop water cooling, which is one of my first time doing custom loop water cooling. And I got all the parts by EK water blocks. So it's a 360 uh, red. I have a nickel water block, everything from EK. I got the D5 pump and it has LED and stuff. Uh, so RGB, LED, whatever. Uh, I don't necessarily care that much for RGB, but actually seeing all the RGB in the case is actually quite cool. Plus it act, adds an extra 420% extra performance 69% of the time, because that's just common knowledge. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the water cooling. So yeah, that's essentially the hardware. So I guess in the next video, what we can do is we can actually dive in and then uh, build the actual machine and like i mentioned i've recorded the entire process i've been wanting to do a video like this like a proper build log video since forever i really love watching tech videos myself i've been building computers myself for well since i was i think i built my first system when i was like 16 or 17 something like that so i i've i always love tech stuff i watch love what i love watching these videos and now that i have a youtube channel i figured i want to do a proper build log myself um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoy the build log. I, I recorded the entire process. It's a very long video. It's a couple of hours of content. So, and I wanted to show as much as possible. And like I mentioned, I split it up into multiple videos. So if you're only interested in, for example, the water cooling part, you can just watch the water cooling video uh, of me putting the water cooling together. And a lot of stuff changes throughout the build because there was some stuff that I thought I was going to do one way and it ended up being a little bit different. So it's uh, quite a journey. So anyway, hopefully I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna be putting together this super awesome workstation. So hopefully uh, I'll see you there. And uh, yeah, else I'll see you in another video. Thanks guys, peace.